Burn the Diaries actually started with a single image. It was an image of light, and specifically the light that um, flooded the elevated train, the subway train in New York City, when it, when it went above ground. And this uh, incredibly bright light would just wash out the words on the pages of an open book. It would just become this totally, um, you know, light reflecting surface, um, and it would uh, be impossible to read anything on the page. Um, at the time, I was also reading uh, Janet, and from his book *Prisoner of Love*, he talked about this idea that the blankness of the page actually held more truth than the black characters, the words on the page. Um, he was asked at one point um, what, um, how it was that he began to write, and uh, he um, had uh, this really um, beautiful description of being in prison and having a postcard, writing a postcard to a friend, and it was snowing outside, and he just began to dilate on the texture of this card um, and the snow in, you know, outside prison. And um, it was Christmas, I believe. And uh, he said that that's, that was the moment when he started to write, when he started to write about the blank card and the snow in prison. There's a lot in this book about paper, about the paper that Janet needs to write on in prison the notebooks that he's always begging friends to send to him about the brown paper that he used to um, to write his his novel that was actually taken from him and burned by the um, the jail keeper and um, he had to uh, he, he rewrote the novel from from scratch um, journals are obviously a big theme of this book, um, ideas of privacy, you know, what, what, and what happens when um, private journals are made public and they become a commodification of the private in a way. And so there's this, you know, this question about, um, you know, how, how, you know, an ethical question, I guess, and also, um, just this questions around consumption, consumption of everything in order to make a product. I had old copies of Janet's complete works that were falling apart. They were given to me by my good friend Susan Keeley, who I end up writing about later on in in the text. But I I photographed the books a lot and I filmed them. Um, there's photographs of envelopes. There's lots of photographs of paper and books, books that I cut up in order to make them easier to read. On, on the cover, there's an image of a book that's been cut in half, and it's set out in a dinner plate with a knife and fork, and that was actually a joke from my friend Allison that I was cutting my books up in order to better consume them. Um, the image of the Pieta is also from Prisoner of Love. And, um, you know, sometimes the words that I was writing and reading would suggest images, photographs, and sometimes um, it was the other way around. Um, a photograph would uh, give me an idea for writing. Um, there's also the idea of... Um, the idea of, you know, what it is that feeds a writer. Um, you know, Janet says that uh, it's, it's not just, he was asked at one point, you know, which, um, which books were most important to him. And he said it wasn't just books, it was everything that, you know, that um, he was fed by, by theater, by music. Um, and so there's kind of this idea that sometimes you just have to stop and listen and, not uh, just take in, take take in um, um, things that that will feed you. 
Um, another theme is attraction, repulsion. Um, I was very, very drawn to Genet's nonfiction. In fact, that's what got me reading him in the first place. His um, his short um, articles, his, his political writing, and also his final book, Prisoner of Love, which was um, unfinished. The title of the book, Burn the Diaries, comes from the poet Philip Larkin, and it was something that he, he said to his, he shouted to his wife as he was being taken um, to hospital. He thought he was dying, and uh, he wanted her to burn his diaries. So a lot, of, a lot of the book is also kind of meditation on the problem of the diary, you know, the, the need to record things, but also the fear, the anxiety of what will happen to all of this material after, after you're gone, after you're no longer around to protect it. Um, at one point I end up in Wyoming at an artist residency and uh, I start to correspond with my good friend Alison Strayer, who also contributed an essay to this book. So much of, much of the writing is, uh, is about the, the epistolary, about the importance of, of the epistolary in, in writing and, and a meditation on friendship and loss. Um, there's a digression uh, about Romare, Eric Romare's film My Night with Maud, and about Catholicism, and um, also other important themes in the book are illness and aging and vanity. Um, vanity also. Um, um, and then finally coming to terms with the Genet because I had a kind of uh, attraction repulsion. I, um, I end up reading his book, Funeral Rites, which parts of which were, were very hard to read. And, um, and at one point I actually even made a kind of good and bad list related to my... Um, you know, my, my, the, the, the vicissitudes of my, um, of my relation to Janet. Uh, I also discovered um, Janet's very, very beautiful writing on Giacometti and dust. And as you can see in many of the photographs, there are, you know, desktops that are, that are covered with dust, as was uh, Giacometti studio. It was it was kind of uh, it was kind of a dust factory. Um, I was also reading Hervé Guibert at the time, and and I write about him. Um, I then end with an image of light uh, filling the one train, and um, I end as I begin. In fact. Um, Although I didn't actually describe, I didn't describe the scene at the beginning. I describe it at the end. This idea of light, you know, uh, bleaching out the words of the book. And there's a photograph of my friend Carolina on the train with the light pouring in, and she's holding Hervé Guibert's book, um, the F the Phantom Image. Um, so there are many photographs of cut books, books on the bed. Um, there are also stills from the Romare film um, with the, um, the parts about money and hoarding money. Um, I talk about my relationship, my friendship with Susan Keeley listening to music with her. Um, the bus also is a theme that relates both to Janet and Hervé Guibert and um, uh, to myself in a way. I, um, I take a lot of photographs and I film on the subway 
in New York City. So there's a photograph of Robert Frank's, uh, the last, the last series that he did, the bus series in New York in 1958, which was also the, the year that Allison and I were born. Uh, Susan was born one year after. It's very much about my friendship with Allison and Susan, which began when we were teenagers. Allison has an essay called Dialogue in a Spare Room, um, which is about writing and friendship and, and also about her, her unfinished novel. And, and then the book uh, ends with some photographs of Mary Wollstonecraft's book, Letters from Scandinavia, close-ups of the letterpress writing on the paper, which was made of cotton, which was thick and pulpy, like the postcard that Genet wrote on. 